Hello Steelers, welcome to this review video of the new Warlord Epic uh, War Napoleonics that they are just about to release. These are currently on pre-order at the moment, they're on their website. I also have an affiliate link for each of these down in the description below, so if you are interested in these, and I'm going to say it now, a little call to action, please use my affiliate link for Warlord, it'll cost you nothing and it also puts a bit more money back into the channel, so please check those out down below before you go any further. But they've sent me very kindly sent me these three new releases uh, these are going to be very useful for me I'll tell you why later on anyway but just to go through what we've got we've got the British Line Infantry Peninsula interestingly boxed up with the Waterloo campaign uh, box I'm going to talk more about that in a bit we've also got uh, Peninsula British Foot Artillery as well and then on top of that we've got Epic Battles Peninsula uh, and Waterloo British Light Infantry now <clears throat> I know before anybody in the comments says I wish they would do X campaign I'm the same I really want them to do the 1809 Danube campaign that would be fantastic uh, I, I can imagine that at some point in the future they will be doing that I can also imagine why they've done the Peninsula War one it's popular Richard Sharp for example you know uh, and also it means that they can pretty much reuse the sculpts that they already have for the uh, the Waterloo campaign anyway with very little uh, difference to what you know what, what uh, uniforms and things so for example if you're going to do some uh, Austrian Grenadiers you're starting from scratch if you're going to do some British light infantry you literally just have to change the shackles and some of the poses and you pretty much got it so I can understand exactly why they've gone down this route the Peninsula War is not a particular interest of mine before anybody says uh, in the comments I'm more interested in the 100 days campaign and I'm going to be using these for the 100 days campaign as well as I paint them up and I'll tell you why when we actually go through the the actual uh, review of these because I'm going to dive in in a little bit but let me just tell you exactly what you get here I mean you've got the light infantry are going to be very useful. Uh, this, these are, I think they are. It's the Sayocast stuff, so it's the resin. No, none of these are metal; these are all uh, resin. So it kind of ties in a little bit with the plastic that they already come in the uh, actual starter sets anyway, and the other sprues. So they're quite light. Uh, the retail price for the light infantry and for the line infantry, the Peninsula line infantry, these are retailing at £22 a box and for the guns they're uh, retailing at £10.50 a box. Now that sounds expensive but I actually looked at Essex uh, metal figures the other day and for the amount of figures that you get in here for the uh, this is for in particular the light infantry I counted them up uh, and I think there's quite uh, I, I worked it out and it comes to about a hundred pounds for metal figures for the same number of these so pound for pound may seem expensive as an initial layout I don't particularly think it is and it is a hobby at the end of the day it's meant to be expensive haha <laughs> anyway <laughs> Uh, my point here is that these are, I think, immediately looking at them, these are pretty good value. And as I say, you can you can then tr uh, quadruple these by buying the uh, brigade sets, which I think you get four sets of each of these in. So you really, really expand your numbers quite a lot. But what we'll have a look at, I'll open these up. I haven't actually opened these. I've had them for uh, almost a week at this point, and I just, I've just i been desperate to open them up. I just haven't had a chance to make this video. So I'm going to open them up. I'll swap the camera over and we'll have a look and we can have a look in a bit of detail what we actually get in these packs. Okay, first of all, let's have a look at these British foot artillery. So you can see immediately you get three guns in these. As I say, you can turn these into a brigade if you want to and I think you end up with about nine guns or something if you really need that many. So, And this is a nice way really of, of not having to buy the sprues with the artillery pieces on them. Uh, let's get if I manage to get this thing open. Uh, okay, this is interesting. This is different. We now have some MDF bases. They're going to be the same size as the others. Uh, Alice packed this one, so thanks for that, Alice. And then a bit of sponge. It's always useful for painting various things. And here's our bits and pieces. So, having a quick look at them. So we've got uh, just trying to work out the two different types of crew in there. I've not found them. There we go. Uh, so we've got the sponge rammer. We've also got the the guy with the uh, the light stick and the um, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. And also the bucket and uh, commander there. And then of course you've got the gun as well. And that looks to me, I think that's that's a nine pounder by the looks of it, uh, compared to the size of the 
uh, the plastic ones there as well uh, so I'm gonna have to let's just see if these fit together hopefully I won't break them uh, and then yes obviously we've got um, I'll you know, put them on the wrong way around, don't I? Uh, so we've also got the bases as well. It looks like I'm going to have to clear out those. Oh no, there you go, that fits there. And then our other one on the other side. As I say, fingers crossed this won't break. My fat fingers, but we're looking at something like that. There you go. Yeah, that looks like about nine pounder, I think, uh, for the uh, for the guns there. So that's those guys. I think they, again, these are lovely, full of detail. Uh, they're they're going to make a slightly different type of gun to the ones that exist already with the uh, Belgic Chaco. So these have got the steel pipe. I did have a look, and I think all the British artillery at Waterloo and in 100 days had Belgic Chacos. I also looked at the uh, Allies as well, and unfortunately I couldn't find any with the Chacos on them. You could possibly, I suppose, use these as Dutch, but... I think these will be useful anyway, and as I say, you know, if they're going to be doing the peninsula anyway, these will be useful for that. Okay, and here we have, this is the light infantry. So, once again, let's see if my fat fingers can get into this. Uh, I always struggle with these, these uh, boxes. I should have opened it before I started filming, but that's where we're at. Right. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Okay, in here we have, let's have a look. We've got one, two, three, four, five six seven eight so basically that is two battalions if you're using battalions as four bases uh two battalions of uh light infantry in here so let's just dip straight in and see what we've got in amongst these guys here so the light infantry uh were wearing shakos eve uh, uh, the stovepipe shako even during the waterloo campaign so and i know that there's at least two battalions of light infantry at waterloo or in the campaign so uh I'm, i think it's a 52nd and a 51st off the top of my head i could be wrong on that but um, i'm sure you'll tell me in the in the in the comments but here we are these are the figures so similar to our previous ones the uh, the plastic ones we've got um, you know these these guys lined up uh, in their nice British lines of course and obviously these just will fix onto those bases I don't think they've got a nub on the bottom no they haven't so they'll just fix on but that's the infantry lots and lots of detail on these very much like the plastic ones as well see if I can find ah there we go there's a command one and let me find there must be at least one more command one uh, i'm hoping and as i say these all these also come in brigade packs as well yeah there's the second command so these are going to be 80 men battalions similar to the plastics and then you also got your command as well and because these are light infantry these guys have got the bugler and the sergeants and also your commander as well in there as well uh, and as i say that's going to be perfect for me because i'm doing the waterloo campaign two units of light infantry uh if it is a 51st and 52nd then they will work perfectly so i think they're really nice and as i say these are that's 22 pounds worth of figures there may seem like quite a lot you could probably actually get a bit cheaper elsewhere but and as I say, that's £22 worth of figures there. Uh, I looked at getting the same amount of figures from Essex, as I said, and it came in about £99, I think, because they do uh, bags of four, or is it eight figures for, for a fiver? And yes, yeah, so it really, you know, it, it really tops up. So I think this is actually pretty good value. And uh, a lot of people like that heft of the, um, you know, the figures themselves. Personally, I'm not bothered. I like to carry things around without hurting my back. So I'm very pleased that these are very light as well. And then finally, we got the British Line Infantry. And it says here Peninsula. And as I say, interestingly, Waterloo Campaign, Peninsula, pick a lane, Warlord, pick a lane. Anyway, uh, that besides, let's just get this opened up. Uh, so these are sealed up. I don't know if the other ones are going to come in a box. This, I don't think they will because there's no flags in the other one. And it does, I, I noticed that it mentions that there are flags in this set. So let's just have a look. As I say, first time I've opened these, so I don't actually know what we're getting. Let's just dive in. Okay, we've got a blister pack, uh, nothing else in there. So just a blister pack, and it does actually have all those things in it. So let's pop this open here. And what have we got? And we do have flags, and there are the figures, all packed up, ready to go. 
and we've got oh we've got a couple of uh, chaps here with flagpoles. Uh, these guys have, these have got the bicorn on them. So yeah, they are older, so they are the peninsula. Let's have a quick look. That's how many of bases we got. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So once again, two battalions worth of figures there. So quite a number. Let's have a look at what flags we've got as well in here. Just get these open so we can see, because it should tell us on here what they are. I think these might be cut downs of the original ones there. Uh, just packed by Alice once again. So we've got, we have the 3rd Battalion King's German Legion, and we've got the 2nd 30th Foot Cambridgeshire. Uh, so they're the flags in there. So those two battalions are covered. Now let's just have a quick look at what we've got. You could obviously use other flags from the other starter sets and other bits and pieces so as I said we've got once again these chaps here these are in their stovepipe shackles uh, we've got some more just got a bunch of these let me just put these to one side then we've also got our command packs here and these are obviously missing their flagmen so you can stick those in yourself uh, it probably just makes painting them up a little bit easier i'm guessing uh, uh probably just actually casting them is probably a lot easier uh, without the flagpoles on these units which is why they've probably done it it's more more to do with that than anything else but there you've got all of that now now i said they the you can also i don't know if you can see there but the, the officer also has bicorn on as well so really uh, quite obviously planting it you know uh, pre-1815 and early early doors now that besides so for the waterloo campaign these can still fit in uh, somewhat if you are prepared to ignore those bicorns and to be fair i am uh, you know officers and people uh, wore all kinds of stuff at different different times so let's just get those set out now i was looking through and for the stovepipe shako, there were actually a couple of units at Waterloo that wore it. Still, uh, there are obviously supplies of the Belgic shako hadn't got through to them. So, for example, we've got the 28th Regiment. They were wearing stovepipe uh, shakos at Waterloo. So these will work very well with them. Uh, so I'm going to probably do at least one of these units as the 28th. And... <coughs> I was also looking as well for the Hanoverians. They were also wearing those stovepipe shakos as well. Uh, there's at least three of their battalions that were. You've got the Lundberg, you've got the Bremen, and you've also got Grubenhagen uh, battalions were also wearing the stovepipe shako during the Waterloo campaign. So, you, even though, you know, and I'm not going to be using these for Peninsula, I am going to still use them, uh, but I'm going to use them for Waterloo, so I'm going to be painting up either as the 28th or as the Hanoverians, one of the three units of Hanoverians. So that's my plan with these. So as I say, they are still relatively uh, diverse and useful for people who are not wanting to do the Peninsula stuff. Also, on the opposite of that, of course, is the fact that this means that Waterloo are probably going, uh, sorry, Warlord games are probably going to be going into the peninsula. So I will be expecting to see some French releases at some point uh, in the future, pen uh, fr uh, peninsula French. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with these. So once again, thank you to Warlord for sending these through i think these are lovely figures they they always do lots of really nice detail on them uh, and i'm very very pleased with them and i'm, I'm going to be uh, able to put these very much to use in my games at some point in the future well as i said you can buy these through my affiliate link uh, just through the warlord games affiliate link that is in the description of the video below and also through the specific video links for these three sets which i will again put in the, de the description down below and please do uh, as i say it does help out the channel also if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to the channel. It is very useful and really boosts my algorithms all across the YouTube universe. Okay, folks, I will see you in the next Storm of Steel video.